Welcome in everyone to the newest edition of Inside LSU Softball alongside Beth Torina. I'm Garrett Walford. The Tigers off to a five game win streak and a series sweep of Ole Miss this weekend. Coach, the Rebels came in a top 50 team in the RPI. They were not ready for Bailey Corbello in game one. Yeah, they came in as a, as a really good team and, you know, another SEC opponent that we've got to show up and give our best game to. So, you know, we started with Bailey Corbello after pitching so well at Kentucky. I thought she deserved the ball on Friday night after having such a great performance there. And she gave us another one. She had a great game, really kept them off balance. She kept her change of speed was great again. And, you know, she was one pitch away from it being an outstanding, outstanding performance. Talk about your offense a little bit. They scored in every inning but one and pounded out 12 hits. It was a lot of fun watching them, and it was a lot of fun seeing somebody that hasn't been in the lineup every day like Elena Falcon step up and truly do exactly what we asked of her. You know, we asked her to swing at a specific pitch and to be disciplined, and she stepped up, did exactly what we asked of her, got two hits. It's so nice seeing somebody come off the bench and trust in the system, and, you know, that's not going to be the last time you see Elena Falcon, that's for sure. The bottom of your order combines to go four for six. Emily Griggs, Elena Falcon, pretty nice day for them. What's it like when the bottom of the lineup contributes as well? I really think that's a big key to this team this year is that we have so much depth, and I think there's never an off inning. There's never an inning you know, where we're waiting to turn the lineup over. I think we have so much depth. I think those guys do such a great job of finding a way on base, passing the bat to the next, and you know they really do help turn our lineup over. So we are getting the bat in the hands of Bianca Bell more often because the bottom of the lineup is doing such a great job. And, scoring in their own right, but also getting, you know, Bianca Bell back up to the plate. Bianca Bell, another 500 day at the plate, two for four, couple of runs scored. 500, that's it. That's it. <laughs> She's doing great. She's been phenomenal and just, you know, really seemed to get back on track this weekend, hit the ball hard, hit the ball all over the field and, and did a great job, I thought, of just stepping up, continuing to be our offensive leader and, you know, really had a nice weekend. Bailey Corbello, as you said, maybe made one bad pitch late in the game. Other than that, scatters four hits and strikes out nine. Great performance. It really was. She did such a great job and, you know, was able to use her change of speed, was able to do so many really nice things. And I think she's really showing us that leadership ability that she has right now. It's hard to call the sophomore an upperclassman, but, you know, she is the veteran on this staff, and she's really showing us that with her performances lately and really just carrying us in SEC play of late. Bailey Corbello now 9-0. That's the best undefeated record in the Southeastern Conference. All right, day two. This is Make Ernie Banks Smile. Let's play two, a doubleheader on Saturday, and you put the ball in the hands of Carly Hoover. Carly Hoover has been phenomenal, and she just continues to overpower people, and we saw that again this weekend. You know, she truly just seemed to overpower Ole Miss, threw hard. She was also able to move the ball around the zone and did a really good job of limiting her mistakes. And what a, another solid performance for Carly Hoover. We've come to just depend on that and, you know, bank on that. And I think, you know, she's proven that's what she's going to give us every time she takes the field. Big day at the plate for the junior, Kelsey Kloss. Uh, she got things going. LSU had nice offense in the middle innings. Yeah, she did such a great job. And, you know, Kelsey Kloss, when she hits something, it's going to go a long way. And she did a great job of, you know, really making sure that she was the person we wanted up when we needed a run scored and she took care of it. She was clutch. She came through. She did a great job. How about Constance Quinn? She proved she can bang with the best of them. Three RBIs in game two. She did. She did a great job and you know it's funny because Constance doesn't hit as many home runs in BP so when she hits one it's a big deal. So when she hits one in the game and we all know she's capable of it but she still makes it a big deal. Make sure we all know when she hits them in BP. So she loves having everybody celebrate for her when she comes around to the plate, I'm sure. But she's a great hitter. She's capable of doing that anytime. And I'm glad to see her just continue to build and just continue to grow some confidence. How about the senior, Dylan Schupach, gets the start at DP, comes away with a big two RBI single. All of the people that we played at DP this weekend did exactly what we asked them to do. They did a great job and, you know, we really tried to match them up against pitchers that they were going to be successful with and really tried to get them to trust into the plan that we had and they all did such a great job of that and Dylan was, you know, just like Elena Falcon, really stepped up, did exactly what we asked her to do and had some really great at-bats for us. Carly Hoover becomes the first SEC pitcher to win 10 games this season. She got good run support too. She did, and you know, she, like I said, has just been dominant. I mean, she just truly c continues to overpower hitters, and just the speed she throws is just unlike anybody else. It seems like when she strides, she's so close to you that it's even harder than it actually is. You know, but she does so many things so well. She's so competitive. We're really lucky to have a pitcher like Carly Hoover with us, and you know, we're lucky she made the decision to come to LSU. LSU gets the win eight to nothing in five innings. Game three, you're looking for the sweep. You put the ball in the hands of Allie Wall Jasper. It's so tough to beat any team three times. It really is, no matter who you're playing, and especially anybody in this conference. You know, they all have such ability and such talent. It's so tough to beat anybody three times. But I feel like we have such an advantage having a pitcher that they haven't seen yet. You know, they were having to go back to a pitcher that we'd already 
played that we'd already beaten. She's having to do something different. We have a completely fresh arm. We even have an arm we didn't have to show them this weekend, you know, which is such a nice advantage for us. So having Allie Wall Jasper out there, who's just been our a spectacular freshman, she's having a great season, you know, I think was such an advantage for us. And she did what Allie seems to always do, gave us a really solid performance. Um, you know, she's not going to strike out as many as, as some of the others, but she's going to keep the ball in the park. She's going to throw us ground balls. She's going to let her defense work. And she still, every time she takes the field, it seems like she has ice water in her veins. Doesn't matter the situation. She just goes out, pitches, does her job, and, you know, asks for the ball again. Big day for the heart of your older. Bailey Landry, Savannah Jaquish, each with three hits apiece. Big day for your offense. It really was. They, you know, just continued to trust in the plan that we gave them. and continue to have great at bats and swing really well. It was fun to watch them compete all weekend long. Bianca Bell, two hits, two RBIs, three runs scored. She's got to be tough to prepare for as an opposing coach. I think that entire section of our lineup is so tough. You know, with AJ and Bailey just having so many weapons, and then Bianca and Savannah really just play off of each other. And I think they all have different strengths, so you can't treat them all the same way. I think that makes them such tough outs for opposing pitchers. And, you know, I think they all just continue to back each other up. And if you get past one, you have another one and another one and another one. And, you know, it's tough to get past Bianca Bell and then have to face Savannah Jaquish, who's one of the best hitters in this conference. So, you know, I think they all play off each other, and they do a great job of really working together to create an amazing offense. Or following up Jake Wish and having to see Kelsey Kloss, who had two more RBIs in this game, she's become a dangerous hitter for you. She really has, and she's really done some great things and, you know, swung for a ton of power when she does and just had some clutch RBIs. And her and Sandra Simmons both seem to be getting the job done there in the 5-6 hole. I think they really are clutch. They really come up with some big hits when we need them. You know, they're juniors and they're experienced. I think, you know, they're part of the upperclassmen group. So they really lead us with their voices, with their performances. I think the two of them really work off each other. And, you know, it's funny that the two of them have been playing together since they were kids and probably back to back in a lineup somewhere along the way is when they were kids. So it's fun to see them right there back to back, just continuing to play off each other and help each other out. Talk a little bit about the crowd. Second largest crowd in the history of Tiger Park this weekend. The crowds have just been amazing. And the Tiger fans, you guys truly make Tiger Park what it is. The atmosphere is just electric. You know, it's such a tough place for visitors to come play because you guys are just on them the whole time. So it's a lot of fun. I think it's a great family atmosphere. I think what a fun way to spend the afternoon. It was a beautiful day this uh, Saturday. So, you know, we really enjoyed having everybody out. I hope that the fans will just continue to support us through the postseason. And I think, you know, as we get down to the wire, you guys can truly change the game. So I hope the fans just continue to come out in full force. It was a great day to be at Tiger Park. So LSU wins 8-2 to two and sweeps the series against Ole Miss. Coming up on the program, our feature on A.J. Andrews getting drafted, as well as LSU's West Coast Connection. We'll look ahead to the series at Tennessee. You're watching Inside LSU Softball. The power one, like what they, how well they do, and how hard they work, and everything that that one person does, it reflects everyone else. So I think that's that gets me. Welcome back to Inside LSU Softball. Great piece of news to start the week is AJ Andrews drafted seventh overall by the NPF Draft. Our cameras were on scene. Let's watch AJ on draft day with her teammates. Welcome to Nashville, Tennessee, for the 2015 National Pro Fast Pitch College Draft. Tonight, 34 seniors realize their lifelong dream of playing professional softball, and it starts right now on CBS Sports Network. The seventh overall pick is an outfielder from LSU, A.J. Andrews. A little speed from Louisiana State University. Number two in the country, head coach Beth Tarina. They love what Andrews brings to the table. She's third on the Tigers in hitting this year. She leads the team in triples and has 11 multi-hit games here on the season. AJ Andrews, she glides through the field with the greatest of ease. It doesn't matter if she's tracking down a fly ball, finding a way on base, running the bases, scoring a run. She has extreme confidence at the Division I level. LSU All-American A.J. Andrews joins a long line of former Tigers drafted by the National Pro Fast Pitch League. Andrews was chosen by the Chicago Bandits in the second round and is the seventh LSU player selected since 2006. A.J. enjoyed sharing draft day with her teammates. Um, it was pretty nerve-wracking. I actually didn't think I'd feel nervous at all or anything like that, but um, it was nerve-wracking. It was really excited, exciting, and to see my teammates' reactions I think was the best. Um, 
I wanted to tear up, not even because I was drafted, just because of how excited they were for me. It was just really cool to see, and I really appreciated it. You know, it's something that she's worked so hard and that, you know, she puts in so much time and effort into this sport. She's so charismatic, so driven, and just inspires everybody, whether you're a pitcher, catcher, outfielder, infielder, whatever, to be a better person and a better player every single day. So we're, we're so thrilled for her. I mean, she's a true leader as far as uh, by example as well as a vocal leader. She's always motivating us, always um, going her hardest for everything and, and shows what a true teammate should be like. Andrews has played all four seasons under Coach Torina, raising her batting average over 200 points since freshman year. The Florida native is known for her speed, stealing 90 bases in her career while making jaw-dropping plays in center field. Coach Torina knows just how driven Andrews is towards success. Well, I think the Chicago Bandits got a great player, and I think she's going to do really well for them. I think she will allow nothing less from herself but to succeed at any level. She's one of the hardest workers I've ever had the pleasure to coach, and you know I think she's going to do a great job in the NPF. Andrews is the highest drafted LSU player since Brittany Mack and Rachel Fico went number one overall in 2012 and 2013. AJ combined with that duo to drive the Tigers to the College World Series during Coach Torina's first season. Andrews scored the winning run by tagging up on an infield fly ball against USF, diving across home plate in dramatic fashion. AJ's excited to compete with the world's softball elite from the MPF. Softball's growing so much in America, and I'm so excited about that. And I feel like if there's anything I could possibly do to make this be on a bigger scale and have the draft be something that's on ESPN, just like other sports, so it's really turned into something that's really, really big then I really want to take that there because, I mean, it's only helping everyone else and it's helping the sport that I love. And I think that if I can really put myself in a position to do that, that'd be awesome. So I love the fact that I got drafted for myself, but I really am excited about the things that I could potentially do for the sport. Brittany Mack, starting with her, um, and then Fico, and now AJ. I mean, it just kind of shows how we're growing this program into something great, and that's going to move on to something even better and make our sport that much better overall. I think she is going to be a great player in the league. I think she's going to be a fan favorite. I think her speed changes ball games, and I think she will continue to do that at any level. I think speed is speed, and she will continue to do that no matter where she is. Coach, you've seen AJ become one of the most dangerous leadoff hitters in the country. What's it like working with someone so dedicated? She's truly one of the hardest workers that I've ever been around. You know, I can come to the field at 1030 at night and hear somebody hitting and I don't even have to look to see who it is. I know it's AJ and she really sets the bar for our team for work and, you know, for just continuing to push yourself until you're the person that you want to be and until you've succeeded. She just really is a great leader for our team in that capacity. How important is it for women, young girls to have the opportunity to play professional sports after their amateur status? It's so valuable, it's unbelievable. There's so many women in this sport that are so talented and they truly deserve to be paid for their talents. You know, they're so good and there's, there's only five teams in the league and they each have 20 players, so we're only talking about 100 softball players that even get the opportunity to compete as professional athletes. So someone that gets the opportunity, I think, needs to jump on it. And these girls deserve more than what we're giving them. They deserve to be paid more. They're so talented. Coaching in the league was such an amazing experience for me. The game is so fast. If you've never seen a professional softball game, you have to get out and see it because it's the fastest game on the planet. And you know these women are just unbelievably talented. So um, I'm so excited to have another one of our players join the league. AJ Andrews will join Rachel Fico, and you know we'll get to compete and show off their talents and truly get something that they deserve. As a former coach of the U-Triple-S-A Pride, where does AJ project at the next level? Still a leadoff hitter? I think she's going to do great. She's with a great organization of the Chicago Bandits, and you know I don't know exactly how they'll set up their whole roster, but you know I know AJ will do whatever she has to do to be successful. So it doesn't matter what they ask of her, she'll find a way to succeed. There's no doubt in my mind she'll do anything it takes to be great. The power of one means to me that I have 20 best friends here that are always having my back. They've always had my back since I've gotten here, helped me through college itself and getting to understand what college is like, the college life, and I couldn't imagine being with any 20 other girls. Welcome back into the office suite here at Tiger Park. Garrett Walbert and Beth Torina with you on Inside LSU Softball. Coach, six players on your team with ties to the great state out in California. Three of them, though, played in the Pure Fast Pitch League. They've known each other growing up. 
They have, and it's been really fun to watch them just continue to grow together and, you know, continue to do some of the things that they've done as kids. And, you know, there's been a couple games where we've written them, you know, like five, six, and seven in the lineup. And I think, you know, how many days have they competed where they've been all in a row in the lineup? So it's a lot of fun to see them just continue to grow. And they know each other so well. They know each other's background. They know each other's families. So they're really such a strong support system for each other. So it's been really fun to watch them mature together, grow together, and succeed together. All right, here's a closer look at LSU's West Coast Connection. My first memory of playing softball with Kaylee and Sandy was I was 13 years old going into high school. Kaylee was um, right before National, she came and helped us. I remember she came from a team that we just beat, and that next weekend she was on our team. Well, I played with Sandy first. Um, started playing with her when I was like 12. I had always known that Kaylee and Sandy were really, really amazing players, and I was almost like so intimidated by them. They were just so amazing. Like Sandy was such a good first baseman, and Kaylee was one of the best hitters I've ever seen. And I honestly didn't even think I'd really like fit in with the team. I didn't know if I'd really have a place. But I mean, right away they were so welcoming to me, and I, I, mean, I just never imagined that we'd be where we are now. Playing with Kaylee and Kelsey has been something special. They started as just teammates, and in travel all we had such a special team, and that it was a family then. And so I think we built that friendship then and spent every day with each other basically during the summertime. Kelsey came when I was 14 and I absolutely hated Kelsey because we were both catchers and I knew she was better than me and it took me about half a season to realize that she's probably one of the most genuine people there are and wasn't trying to steal my position or anything like that. She was just there to play. Finally getting to come here with Kelsey and I, like I remember our official visit was us three on the field. Like we were so excited to be back together again. I, I feel that with them growing up playing together and um, of course knowing each other's strengths and weaknesses, I feel that that really helped them in the long run. Well Kelsey Kloss is the glue. She's the one that keeps us together. She is the player that every coach would love to have because she does every single thing that's asked of her and more. Kelsey is my motivator, and so is Kaylee. Uh, Kelsey will be a little bit nicer. She'll be assertive, but she'll be a little bit nicer and say things um, very nice. Kelsey on the field is a constant person that's talking on the field that is our vocal leader on this team. Like No matter what we're doing, she has a say in letting us know, like, hey, we got this, let's go, keep going. A three-run home run on to the left center field hillside for Kelsey Kloss. She's got half a dozen homers on the year. Sandra Simmons, definitely, I, I would say I'd hate to play against her. Uh, knowing that, you know, girls are running at the first and she's willing to knock them down for the team, that, that's somebody to have that knows, you know, hey, I'm going to have your back no matter what, every, you know, every at bat, every play on the field. Um, she's just awesome. You know, there's no mistake about why she's played every game of her career since she's been here because she is talented, uh, she's tough, she's hard-nosed. Um, I love players like Sandra Simmons. Sandy is just someone I look up to in so many ways. She's one of the best competitors I've ever been around and she just helps me understand the game so much better and I, I'm just so thankful that I've gotten a chance to be around someone as competitive as her and just, I mean, I, you know, I hope we end up on the tops together at the end of this year, but just going through so many things that I have with her, it's, it's just something that not a lot of people get to experience, so it's really cool for me. Two out RBI the entire year. There is number 111 right on cue and a throw from the right fielder. Kaylee's the exact same way. She plays first base with me and she pushes me every single day to get better. I know every at bat, you know, I get in the hole and she's telling me where this pitch is going to be, what she's been doing this whole time, and it, and it really helps me. And I know that at the end she's going to have my back, you know, just by watching the game and, and doing what she's, you know, called to do. That's it's just an awesome thing to have this room. So. Kaylee. Um, is another one that really understands the game. She gets it. She knows what it takes to be good. Um, she understands what the team has to do on a daily basis to be successful, and you know she really helps push them to that. McCaslin shows bunt. That's a good one. Back to the circle. Pitcher throws the first. It's low, but dug out. So McCaslin does what she is asked to do, and then puts runners at second and third for Quinn. It's great having them on the team with me. Um, I, I probably wouldn't uh, be the player I am without them today. The Power One means to me 
uh, uniting as one to achieve a common goal. And our common goal is to win the national championship in Oklahoma City. And I think by making each other better every day, I think we have a great chance of winning the whole thing. Our player performance of the week belongs to sophomore from Prairieville, Bailey Landry. What a week at the play for her, four games, and she really got it done. She's such a talented offensive player. She just can do so many things, and on top of being able to do so many things, she does them in the clutch. You know, she always comes through for us in RBI situations. She always makes something happen, and you know, she's just so fast. She can hit for power. She can bunt for a hit. She has so many weapons. What a tough out for other pitchers. I'm glad we don't have to face Bailey Landry, and I don't have to call pitches against Bailey Landry, but you know, it seems like she's just a lot of times the unsung hero, but she is truly a day-to-day -day hero for this program. The best way to stay up to date with the Tigers is, of course, on social media. You can follow them on Twitter at LSU Softball and like them on Facebook, of course, LSU Softball. Coach, tough week coming up for you. You'll go to Knoxville and take on Tennessee. They're two games back in the standings and a top 15 RPI squad. It really is a tough week for us, you know, going on the road, going to Tennessee, playing Mississippi State in the midweek. I think it's really going to be a challenging week for this team. It's going to be a week that we really need to be prepared for, need to put in the work for, and it's going to be a great week of SEC competition. We're excited to get on the road and spend our spring break in Starkville and Knoxville. How nice is it that you don't have to tip your hand? Nobody knows who you're going to throw in the circle for these four games. You've got such a, a, an assortment of options. It's amazing, and I think it's really helped us. I think it's great for them to not be able to prepare for us to match up whoever we think is the best fit that day. I think it's really been a key to our success. You can catch all the games on television, a broadcast on two SEC Network Plus broadcasts, and, of course, big exposure on ESPN. For Coach Tarina, I'm Garrett Walbert. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right here next week with our newest edition of Inside LSU Softball. Thank you.